Hello everybody and to all the students out there, uh, hope you are looking forward to your September holiday. Now, for today's video, we are just going to talk about something that a lot of us love to do and I did it a lot as a student, which is to guess answers. Now there is a big difference between making a guess and hoping for the best and making a guess which is not quite what you're supposed to do, but that actually guarantees you the correct answer. And I'm going to show four examples of how to guess and yet be fairly sure that you are correct. Now, let's start with the first type of guessing, which is basically the type of guessing where you sort of say that they are obvious numbers. Now what I mean by this is that sometimes in an SMO problem or in any Olympiad problem, there is an intended method that involves some algebra and involves some equation solving. But you don't have to do that if let's say that for the question, it is fairly obvious what is going on. Now take for example this question from 2021. If you were taking the SMO in 2021, you would probably know the factorization of 2021 which was 43 times 47. Now, of course, this then becomes a bit silly because you are told that given five consecutive positive integers and the product of the largest and the smallest integer is 2021, 20, well, it's staring you in the face, right? This and this would be the two numbers which will be the smallest and largest. So there's no need to do anything more clever. All you need to do is just to, you know, add them up. The intended approach would have been to use some sort of a quadratic equation, but I think that is entirely unnecessary. So, obvious numbers. Once in a while, the SMO will give you numbers which are extremely obvious, and you can just stare at it and know what are x and y without writing any equation down. This is the first type of guessing. Obviously, if you have guessed it, you know you're right. Now, the second type of guessing is something that a few of you already are aware of, but those of you who are newer to Olympiads may not realize you are allowed to do this. And what this would be called is abusing uniqueness. Now, abusing uniqueness means that your final answer has to be a fixed value even though it appears that you have choice. So you know those magic tricks where they tell you to think of a number. Actually, the think of a number is not really a free choice because they have set it up such that the final outcome, let's say, is always seven or something like that. So you're not really getting a choice. Maybe the deck of cards in a magic trick are all really the same. Now, that's what happens for a problem like this. What you're supposed to do is to do a whole lot of algebraic manipulation on this expression here, which looks like quite a mess. But abusing uniqueness means that you can assume a special case. And assuming a special case is not the intended approach, but guarantees you the correct answer because this answer must work for any x and y. So in this case, you just need to let x equals to 1 and y equals to 0 and it should give you the same answer as if I picked any other combination, but with almost no calculation either. Because if x equals to 1, y equals to 0, then everything with a y disappears, and so your answer is just 1. Now, this also works in geometry. Sometimes you can assume the triangle is equilateral. This also assumes that no matter how the triangle is like, the answer doesn't change. So, Quick cautionary note, this only works for round one or for the short answer contest such as the AMC, the SASMO, the AIME or any other single answer contest they are taking. So please do not try to give this as a proof. Now the third trick requires a little bit of thought and it applies to multiple choice questions. Now, 
the AMC is coming soon, so this is very pertinent to contests like the AMC. Sometimes the options which are given have a little bit of quote unquote vulnerability in them. What I mean by vulnerability is that you don't need to solve the whole question in order to be able to single out the option that is correct. For this question here, the intended solution is to actually draw a graph. The intended solution would be to draw the x over 100 and then draw another graph of y equals to sine x and of course this is not really to scale but you would count all of the intersection points here and you can imagine that this is going to be a little bit of a hassle right it will also go down the other way so not drawing this to scale at all but uh, you would count it and you would go by okay each cycle of 2 pi how many intersections are there count how many cycles there are uh, count how many cycles sorry, how many intersections per cycle and so on and so forth there is however a very simple trick here and the simple trick lies in the fact that this is symmetric here you have got zero as a solution because when x equals to zero sine zero is zero and zero over hundred is also zero but because the graphs are symmetric it means that all the other solutions are going to come in pairs what does that mean well it means that if all the solutions come in pairs you will expect an odd number of solutions because the number of intersections corresponds to the number of values x such that these two are equal so the method asks you to use a graph but you don't even need to use a graph you could also just have simply said that if x is a solution then minus x also will be a solution and so therefore the only odd number must be the correct answer now I'm not sure whether this is intended by the organizers as a general statement about 50% of the time these are actually built in whether it be the AMC or the multiple choice questions in the SMO but the other 50% of the time it's just an accident and so you can feel a little bit proud of yourself that you have found a trick that the question setter did not realize the last trick is something that is abusing integers now when I say abusing integers I mean that the answers for most contests have to be integers now of course if it's non-integer for the SMO that would be in the multiple choice section which I have just talked about an example of how to make use of that now, for contests like again the AMC which are multiple choice this doesn't apply for contests like the SMO or the AIME where you have integer answers, this most certainly does apply. And one way to abuse integer answers is simply to do bounding. Now, bounding means that all you need to do is to estimate and sometimes it's pretty obvious how big or small it can be now take for example this problem here now this is a very poor choice of problem if you think carefully about it because this is telling you about the center i of a circle inscribed in abc so this is the in center and then saying that AI intersects this again at D. Now looking at this, this is a circle of radius 1 and you want to find this length here. Now obviously, this is going to be more than 0, it's a line. 
it is also going to be less than 2 because the diameter is 2 and this is most certainly not a diameter. So if it's more than 0 and less than 2, that means that the length must be 1. That's the only integer possibility. Alternatively, if let's say that we wanted to abuse uniqueness, we could also assume that the triangle is equilateral. That would have been abusing uniqueness, which was what I mentioned in the second example. Many problems are susceptible to ideas like this. That does not mean that this is the intended approach, but in a time-pressed competition, whether it be 5 minutes per question, 7 minutes per question, or 3 minutes per question, we want to get any advantage we can. And so tricks like these are extremely important and also nothing to be ashamed of. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video and let me know if you have any other suggestions for topics for me to talk about. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.